So here it is, Twitch Side episode 12. Um, I know I'm over 24 hours late in uh, publishing this on Friday, but uh, here it is, Saturday, um, local time, 2 o'clock p.m. Um, the reason why it's been late is because of family stuff and uh, playing a little bit of small end, just can't live. But anyway, uh, without further ado, Twitch Side episode 12. So as always, we got Pac-Man 31. How you doing, Pac? Doing fine and dandy. Also, uh, we've got uh, a fellow streamer here, Craft Kish. How you doing, man? Pretty good. We also have an old friend. An old friend. Uh, he's not old. He's just been around since... How long have we been kicking around, can't you? Ah, shit. Yeah, I'd say at least. Uh, probably ever since I've been with Sam's Club, so 10 years, almost. Yeah, full decade. Oh my god, I can't believe you can stand me that long. And then, of course, <laughs> we got the man behind the thumbs, even though he's not all thumbs. Brick, how you doing, man? I seem to have lost my thumbs. No, I, I, I got all the backups. You know, you can get them on YouTube for the last 10 episodes. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. All right, so um, we put up, uh, you know, I actually, you know, put a little bit of thought into this. Um, things are I happening. Do, right? <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but whatever. Things that uh, kill games. Um, it's... It, it's kind of wide ranging, but we'll we'll kind of figure it out. So up first, what what uh, topic do you guys want to tackle first? Hmm. Oh, pull your uh, pull the or I guess the list is right here. Oh, I'm stupid. Uh, um, let's just go ahead and dive into the one that I think is most prevalent in almost any single gaming community. We go ahead and face uh, toxic communities. Okay. How All they right. form, etc. You know what I mean? Okay. Cool with that. Because I feel as if, for for a while, a majority of our, our toxic players probably came, in my opinion, um, a smidgen from like Unreal Tournament slash old school um, Counter Strike days. Mm -hmm. Personally, <laughs> that's kind of where it started because that's where like the first de first years of online shit talking. It, so I mean, think of it. You had ample ways to just go ahead and get in a chat right off the bat and just say whatever you wanted. And then as everything progressed, we started getting voice chats and voice lobbies, so on and so forth. And it just goes on from there. But I, I guess it's more of a, in that regard, more of a question of how do they form and how do we stop them right. from killing games or just in general. Well, actually, uh, I do know that um, there was, uh, I, I can't remember which which it was, but it was a first-person shooter. And they, there was like people who that had like the anti-bullying brigade where they would just call in this this group of players to go in and uh, bully the bulliers, but they turned out to be even worse than the actual bulliers. Ooh. I thought it was kind of funny, that, but that that sounds like a Halo Reach situation. <laughs> yeah, probably. But uh, just just for shiggles, I went ahead and typed into um, into GXNet um, the. Uh, the, t the most well, what did I type in? I typed in five most toxic gaming communities. Hey, break with the salute. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we got League of Legends number five, FIFA number four. I can see that. Yeah, I can definitely FIFA. see that. Yeah, I hate FIFA. Sorry, I, I hate sports games. <laughs> uh, and of course, Call of Duty. You, we all know here at the Prague stream. That sounds bad and dirty, but I don't care. Moving on. Uh, it's a terrible game. Call of Duty, I, I have a major I'm split. Vague, I'm a I meant Vanguard in particular. Yeah. I meant Vanguard in particular. Like They picked a really bad Call of Duty game, but, which, I mean, makes sense because the game was so bad, yeah, I guess the community was going to be talking about it. Oh, my God, Vanguard really is no different, which is a hard pill to swallow, given the fact that fans of the series have been hounding its makers to banish the toxicity for a fair few years now. Fact is, Vanguard retains the lion's share of the bitter critiques with reports of harassment, uh, threats, uh, yeah, and cyberbullying. I I really? I mean, that's how Call of Duty's been, though, since the okay, early days. Let's be, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, since, 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 since the advent of teabagging, yeah. Yeah. Look, we're well, that was a Halo thing, though. Modern Warfare 2 COD lobbies. Let's go ahead and just call it what it is. Yeah. Both yeah. my minorities were insulted every single time. Oh, yeah. I entered that lobby, man. But dude, like, now, nobody gave a shit. Like, no, that was the thing. Like, nobody cared. That was just part of the game. It just happened. But see, all right. Well, I have, I have, a, I have a hot mm. take for you guys. 
right. How about this? Shoot, shoot. All right, so bullying. Oh, bullies need to stop. Ooh, bullies need to be punished. I take every opportunity to bully my four-year-old and my 14-year-old every damn day. Bully, bullying creates thick skin. Exactly. And there are limits. It's, it can be a slippery slope. I will admit that. But it's a lot like hazing in the military. You know, you got hazed, and therefore you get to pay it forward when it's time for you to do the hazing. But like, like, oh, this happened to you. Oh, how can we up it? And that's 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 a bad that's a bad thing. But um, bullying, dude. I mean, it, it, it like you get bullied by the world at large. Gravity monster will freaking throw you off your roller skates. And you will hit the asphalt guardian of the road. And that was your, you know, the world bullying you to be better at roller skating. Of course, apples to oranges and shit like that. But in video games, if you do bad or, or do, do poorly, you know, and if you're combat or competitive, um, you know, you, you know, you'll get ribbed. Yeah. But, but, but that kind of rolls into a, another topic or another um, uh, bullet point later on down this list. But, yeah, I mean, I bullying. No, I do agree that it develops. It gives you tough skin. Yeah, so you have to. So bullying you know. to me is not like a sign of toxicity. Honestly, let's let's just put it there. Sorry, I, I had to go on my little woke rant there. Hot take. <laughs> and Valorant, I don't know anything about Valorant. How about you guys? I know a little bit. I didn't know it was really that toxic of a community. I mean, I guess any online game where it's uh so PvP I think like that was that. pretty much. Uh... Uh, uh, kind of stems in the same category of Counter Strike. Yeah, it's sense. basically yeah. It's, it's, it's basically, essentially the same game, just a little different. It's basically S and D. It's S and D for the whole thing. You have one life. That's kind of it. You play different rounds. I've never played it, but I've seen people play it, and yeah, it, it's Counter Strike, but with abilities for characters. So it's like, eh. Rick, did we lose you? No, I'm still here. Oh, okay. So um, I just saw this on a highlight of this. I've never heard of this before, but Valorant muted 400,000 players and served up 40,000 bans. Holy cow. Was, hey, look at the that next line. That single was from month. a single month. Yeah. That's insane. And what's even more insane, in one month? Ugh. Is that just from trash talking and stuff like that? or? Okay, so uh, uh, the rapid incline in toxicity for this a hat trick has officially been scored, making it one of the most toxic communities. Okay, so Valorant, the most toxic video game community of 2022. Unfortunately, this is the first strike for the right games free to play first person shooter. In fact, surveys consider the game the most toxic of not only 2020, but 2021. Okay. Well, dude, this game has been out for probably three or four years to begin with, so damn. Yeah. Damn, dude, that's incredible. Like, I was okay. So, so about bans, right? I was banned uh, for like three days from World of Warcraft back during, back in the day when I was a war geek. Okay, so, okay, real quick, real quick. Valorant came out in June of 2020. So <laughs> there you go. Okay, that's quick. That's real quick. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> well, like I got banned. For, all right. So, so the, you know, story from way back when, or years. Um. I got banned for three days just for calling a kid stupid because he wanted to, you know, wanted, you know, you know, some thing in, you know, wanting to sell chat for like four times its price that you could get on the market. Well, that's just stupid. I'm going to get it from the market. And I got banned for that. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I mean, it's not, I mean, just getting yeah, banned for that. Ridiculous. That's, that's pretty, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of toxic players in a lot of different games, but still yeah it, it's it's freaking nuts what what game to you guys was the most toxic for communities i mean rust is pretty toxic rust but that, yeah but that's like a 50 50 like you know some people won't like it and some people like it because of that oh well um, bearing that in mind grand theft auto shoot yeah. first ask questions never reefers, you know? oh, yeah i know right but anyway you had something to say can't do um, I don't know if you're just going to more tech on and I actually kind of agree on that last point. Um, that that is also another toxic one. And then fuck, you, you dropped off Grand Gen Theft Auto, and I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> that's, that's even, that was even more valid. Um, on that kind of same point, 
I, mean, I got nothing. I mean, th- it pretty much falls into the category of what I feel like first person shooter, MMOs, but some MMOs, um, depending on the situation. So um, mostly, so you know, choice type games. So mostly it's like MMO stuff. Oh, you know what? Star Citizen. Man, they, for a very long time, Star Citizen, Citizen had a huge religious following of, of, of uh, fans. And every time somebody would detract, oh, well, it's just a scam. It's just a scam. They're like, oh, no, bro. I mean, it, it, they kind of had... The $10,000 to... ship I have is so, much, so worth yeah. the money. Yeah, it, well, that's because they're pot committed, if I can use a poker term here. Um, and, and like... Yeah. We'll allow it. Yeah, that, they're like, yeah. No, they, they, they kind of remind me of, of the same energy that freaking crypto bros have. You know, so... I'm about, I'm about to kill me a kitty. Anyway... Uh, Pac-Man, you've been suspiciously quiet. Have you experienced a toxic community that just killed the game for you? Honestly, not yet. You, sir, are a very lucky man. You're a diamond in the rough. I'll give you that. <laughs> and, I, and I feel like most of the toxicity comes from competitive games. And that's why I haven't that's seen true. it. That's yeah. actually also a fair point. So, I mean, I think the most I like... I've seen, and it's not even that bad as Sea of Thieves. It's just more of a nuisance. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's how you run into. If I can't fucking, yeah. dead, if I can't fish in 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 Sea of Thieves, I I, I don't I don't care. <laughs> but I'm here to. I mean, it's fun to watch. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Man, we love finding fishermen and just taking their fish. It's fun. I mean, fish can be expensive, <laughs> man. Brick, I sure. will kill you. It really can get kind of expensive. Okay. <laughs> So up and next, we'll uh, I think we can probably go into uh, something that actually can affect communities: hacking. Oh, absolutely. Hacking, and also the presence of anti-cheat software and what it does to the performance of the game itself, and um, the zero kernel hacks. Um, so the the one th- the reason why I bring this up is because of Rust, definitely. And also of uh, Titanfall. Titanfall 2 uh, basically was completely ruined by hackers because uh, it, it, you know, uh, Blizzard didn't do. I think it was Blizzard or was it Activision? I'm gonna show my my uh, ignorance on who Wait, actually what? developed Titanfall and Titanfall 2, but they had they had major, major, major uh, uh, security problems. Uh, there was a hacknet. Uh, uh, I can't remember the the hacker uh, group that did it, but um, they basically yeah they could like take any streamer, put them on a blacklist, and then just kill all the servers that they're on that all the players are playing for Titanfall and Titanfall Two, like that. And uh, it was it was pretty crazy. Um, uh, upper Echelon Gamers or uh, Upper Echelon as he is branded now on YouTube did a huge expose on that and he was in the different discords for both uh titanfall players and 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 clans and the actual uh hacker group and and it was uh they used that for i think it was apex i I could be wrong but uh the same people who made titan actually let's instead of talking about my by the way respawn entertainment did it Mm -hmm. for titanfall I don't know about the phone. I know they did the first, second one. I don't know. Yeah, if they did Apex. The first. Yeah, it was Apex because there's there's a lot of hey Lex Laker, how you doing, man? Coming in for a little twist that we're talking about um uh things that can kill a game for whatever reason, and then after that we're gonna be uh, hitting small land. So I, well, I, y'all will be. I appreciate <laughs> you coming in and saying hello, Lex. Appreciate it, man. But uh, anyway, um. So, like, Respawn Entertainment uh, had a huge hack- hacking problem for Titanfall and Titanfall 2. And uh, basically, the hacker group um, was holding Apex Legends uh, hostage, apparently, according to Upper Echelon. And that was, like, super squiffy for me. It was it was nuts on, on all the shenanigans that was going on in there. But um, having said all that... Uh, you know, hacking, and then of course you got games that have, um, you know, the anti-cheat software and stuff on there, uh, which adds, com- uh, 
even more um, requirements to run the game, and it slows it down. Rust is a perfect example of that. Um, there, I know there's a lot of different games out there that have anti-cheat and stuff like that, but even though um, the anti-cheat is all well and good, but there is such a thing as zero kernel uh, cheat bundles um, that uh, runs, and which is extremely dangerous to run on your on your comu computer. Um, uh, but uh, you can actually buy these bundles, and it completely bypasses uh, the anti-cheat software or whatever it's using. So yeah, like EFT cheats and stuff like that. There's, there's, the, I mean, I'm not clicking on any of these. Forget that, because oh, no. yeah, why not? Yeah, but see, Valorant and Apex, you know, yeah. I mean, botting and all that stuff. That it, it definitely kills the game for sure. And you know, if if somebody's you know playing with um, cheats and you're sitting there trying to do the combat and competitive thing and you get destroyed because somebody was cheating there goes your shot and also on top of that you know I mean you can't do that tournament anymore you know because yeah, it's on one and done side. yeah and it, it like it, it completely destroys that's that's one of the things that uh, I, I checked out before um, I, I agreed uh, in contract form to be a streamer for Altered Edge as I asked Marv, the uh, founder, I says, "How do you deal with cheating?" And he goes, "It's no tolerance." And and uh, so there's none of that um, bullshit that's going on. I mean, uh, there was um, cheating in competitive. I think it was what was it? Competitive games, esports. Ah, uh, oh, images. Oh, that's nice. Um, but uh. Let's yeah. Let's just go to here. Cheating in esports. Um, do 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 do. Where? Oh wow, that's too big. Oh, there's no sidebar. There should be like doping bug. What is this? Are you looking for a specific game? No, I'm. I'm. Uh, no, there was there was actually um. Uh, points where where uh cheaters who were in. Champ in championships, they got oh. caught because they didn't. They they were like too good at it, and they 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 didn't even freaking try to disguise the fact that they were they were cheating. Uh, there was streamers that were doing the the competitive thing, and uh, they failed to even turn off the the thing on their on their overlay that shows that they were actually cheating because you know they were hitting people on zip lines, you know, while they were in free fall and getting headshots. And the only way to kill somebody on a zip line was to get three successive headshots in a row. Which is like, you know, and while it was tracking sideways, so it wasn't like a straight on shot, you know, um, that it, it's just terrible. Or even people having like ESP on and forgetting to put the overlay on so that it doesn't show up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, there's been for, a lot of people exposed for that. Yeah. So the anti the anti cheat software is all well and good for you know like players like me who don't want to de deal with zero kernel, but I'm I'm not a cheater. You know, I mean, like if, if like, like good example playing with Lex and and doing the 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 team deathmatch and stuff. That's all in good fun, you know. I mean, you know, you're pitting skills, whatever. But if say if somebody's got like an AI pilot who's flying flawlessly and knows how to deal with FFA, you know, whatever, which I don't think is a thing, you know. But uh, it probably is. Who knows? I'm just a dumb dumb guy with a microphone, but um. You know, I mean, it's all in good fun when we know each other and, and we can give each other some slight bullying ribbing. It's like, oh, you, you're a shit pilot, but you're getting better or something like that. You know, because I know I'm a shit pilot. But um, when you're when you're playing in a competitive mode and, you know, the, the, the playing field is as level as it can be when it comes down to skill that that that's super fun. But like, if if you if you think that somebody's so good that they're cheating, I mean, what's the point? It's like you're just gonna throw up your controller and say, "Screw it, I'm gonna go read a book." Yeah, and I think a perfect example of that is the. Uh, oh shit, Geek Ranger, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Hi. Damn um, good to see you. I I popped into your stream and saw this topic, and I, I thought it'd be interesting, um, especially with uh, with season eight of Sea of Thieves. Uh, with the hourglass update uh, and Ooh. more on demand PvP, there was an uptick in cheaters for uh, the mode because really, yes, hmm. because a lot of in order to get the respective ghost or skeleton curse, uh, you do have to grind pretty heavily. Uh, I think it's about 300 wins uh, in order to get 
the respective curses for the uh, Guardians faction and the Servant of the Flame. And so what started coming out of the woodworks are a bunch of cheaters in that mode. And yeah, there's already a lot of cracked PvP players in Sea of Thieves. The game's been out for five years, so people have, are obviously going to be really good. I think a really good um, player off the, just the top of my head is uh, Mixel. Uh, he is just an incredible god at PvP, uh, and I, I've had the displeasure of being uh, in his broadside, and it was lovely. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that aside, uh, I have personally experienced myself cheaters, uh, not necessarily in PvP, but hackers within the community, but I know several people that have done Hourglass PvP that have experienced people with... Um, invulnerability cheats or uh, aim botting. Yeah. Yep. Aim aim botting, especially on cannons. Uh, that one is huge, and you can usually tell when somebody is aim botting is if you know you're in a dead spin and they just all of a sudden start hitting you out of nowhere, and it's like, where did this cannonball come from? Right. That <laughs> that could not have possibly gotten to my boat because of the distance between us. Well, uh, well, well the, the that... over. Well, just so you know, the overarching. Um topic isn't just cheating it's just you know things that can kill a game oh absolutely yeah so i mean like definitely and like you know um you know the call of duty is notorious for it you know i mean it, you know don't get me wrong you know i i see the fun in it but like i'm not playing call here, of duty here's the thing for me with call you bring up call of duty call of duty didn't have a problem with cheaters to, based on my recollection until warzone like yeah. nobody like i never ran into cheaters or if i did it, 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 i didn't notice it but like as soon as warzone became popular that's when like all the cheaters started just coming out of the woodwork and it's not mm -hmm. it's probably more just for the brs in general because i know we talked I, about it, earlier but battle royale is bringing out a lot yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I would agree with that but I, I feel like the way that uh toxic players have gotten have, have a I feel like the way that toxic players have continued to be prevalent is because they've just evolved with what's available. Like when we were playing on the Xbox 360, right? Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, mm -hmm. the biggest thing that somebody could really do back then was lag switch. You know, hook up a couple yeah. of wires to a, to a fucking light switch and you have yourself internet issues all of a sudden. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, combat really logging. Which is yeah, completely that's... frowned upon in the Elite Dangerous community, by the way. Oh, I bet. Yeah. You stick it out. You pick the fight. You're going to be there till the finish. Come blowing up or you get blown up. Yeah. So, it's like, yeah. It's, it's bad practice. Yeah. And whereas yeah. nowadays, anybody with half a, half a sense of coding could write a, just a simple string and all of a sudden you're getting DDoSed. Yeah. And or you I, can, and I feel... a lot of them you can just find online. Oh yeah, a lot of well, you can get on well, GitHub. Well, so Reddit. so here's here's the thing. So I just typed in Sea of Thieves cheating, and guess what, man? I can you know like uh let's see um where was it? I just saw it. Uh, yeah, wall hacks right here, dude. Aimbot plunder and rule of seas with our Sea of Thieves cheat. And you know like when when you like you know this goes right back to my point. Uh, it's hacking and anti-hack, right? So like you've got surface level hacking, which anti-cheat will catch, right? And they're out. And there's actually been people who were actually so good that anti-cheat flagged them and banned them anyway. And they're like, no, I'm just that good. There are times for that. You know, and of course, they, they you know, they can tweak the, the what is it, the uh, variance or the threshold. But then you also have the anti-cheat stuff, right, that doesn't catch people actually running a zero kernel code program that's mm -hmm. like... Zero kernel code, if, for those of you who don't know much about computers, like I don't know a lot, but I do know that zero kernel code actually goes and, and operates at the CPU level. And if you run a, a, a screwed up zero kernel program, you can brick your whole damn computer. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So like if if I was nefarious and smart, I would be like, you know what? <laughs> These cheaters, they're going to get what they deserve, man. I'm going to make sure that their GPUs get fried. I'm going to make sure their CPO freaking explodes. I'm going to do all of this and sell it for like, you know, five grand. Because in my personal opinion, if you're going to go ahead and, and spend five grand to cheat and lord it over and be, oh, look at me, you know, whatever, you deserve to uh, not play games. How about that? You know, go go back to backgammon. Go back to Monopoly or whatever. <laughs> 
But that's that's from like multiplayer games, especially when people are are trying to pit skill against skill. You know, I was a decent Halo player back in the day, and it was fun. But you know, of course, that's land parties and stuff too. But that's that's a different era. But uh, yeah, bad multiplayer for a game. Mm. And that one was a uh, I forget the name of the game, but you and me played it, Prague. It was a uh, you had to wrapped in between islands and oh, uh, uh, stranded, stranded deep. Game. Yes, stranded deep. That was okay. So that was that. Yeah, that was that was a console problem. So was it? yeah, Stranded Deep oh. was is actually on Steam. It's a decent game. Actually, Kish knows a l- little thing or two about it. Yeah, I played it a few times. Oh, really? Yeah, and and uh, actually, me and my daughter actually played it a little bit, and that was a hard freaking game. Local co-op, split screen, which is really going the way of the dodo, unfortunately. I love me some freaking local co-op, some couch co-op and stuff. I remember back in the day, you know, shredding out on the freaking Guitar Hero and the freaking drums and rock band and stuff. Yeah, that was so yeah. much fun, man. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. The d- decisions on on that game getting pushed out when it did was all because of the money. They were greedy. They were trying to make good on their prom, you know, not good on promises. They're trying to make their shareholders make more money, right? Now yeah. I gave it. I, I have I have a very specific criteria to um, give a game a second chance, okay? Um, and that criteria is uh, number one, it has to be a new IP, and two, they they got to put a genuine effort to making it better. Now, the only two games that I have ever given it a chance was Cyberpunk 2077 and No Man's Sky. Those were the only two things that well, actually, you know, well, No Man's Sky will come up again on on this list too, but. Um, you know, uh, a good example for bad execution or implementation would be the Odyssey update for, for Elite Dangerous. I have never seen a company fracture its own community so badly so quickly. And then Odyssey uh, came out and it bjorked everything on the PC. And they were like, okay, well, we got to figure out how to port it, you know, and make sure that it could be worked on on, on the consoles. Which is both on PlayStation and Xbox, and and they said we can't do it, so they stopped supporting um, story updates and shit on for console Elite Dangerous players. I'm like, well, that's boned. But uh, I mean, the bad execution kind of goes in with uh, the troubles that New World had. I mean, they did have their problem oh, with yeah. hackers, like doing the item oh. dupes, but right. also the only way to get money in that Wrong. game was through item drops. So a lot of people were hoarding money and uh, bartering items. Instead of actually yeah. buying, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, Your money I mean, was so hard to come by. I remember when New World was released or was announced. I was like super stoked, super excited. I was like, "Wow, this is awesome!" Dang. Right? But yeah. you know, going on on their on their website here, I mean, it looks amazing because they're trying to sell you more shit, right? Yeah, right. But yeah, it, it's. I think it's. It could have been. It's almost better. Dead. Oh, this is funny. Uh, 2022 most improved MMO. Well, if it was a shit MMO to begin with, and they just improved three things on it, most improved? Like, what is that? <laughs> hey, Jailer Games, how you doing, man? Pay to win ruins a game for me. GTA 5 Online is a perfect example. I don't know if y'all talked about it. No, but that's in the future. We, yeah, we, we, we touched a little bit on GTA 5. Oh, did we do? No, we haven't even got to the microtransactions. I don't think we like, fully went into it. I think we like touched touched to it as like a a talking point. We petted, Maybe. we 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 heavy petted it. That was for the toxic communities, and then put it back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I think for me, like a triple, we just we just, we just gave it a little. <laughs> Sorry. What's that, Ranger? Um, I I think for me, a, a, an example of poor implementation or a bad execution is um things like always online. Uh, games, even, even though they're single player, Ooh, like Redfall. I, I mean, yeah. it's not even out yet, but <laughs> it's not even right out yet. But there's already controversy behind it because uh, there's there's some games that have leaderboard functionality where you can compete against your friends. Or in the case of some of the more recent Ubisoft games, you get like in-game cosmetics for completing weekly or daily challenges. Those ones don't require online, but it's still a hindrance because it still wants you to connect to a server, right. and you get either FOMO or some sort of um, 
you know, difficulty with trying to play your single player game looking at you, Just Cause 3, uh, because it can't connect to a server. <laughs> Whereas an always on Are you game, maligning Just Cause 3? I love the game, <laughs> but it is annoying to all fuck when I want to play that damn game and it has to try to connect to the Squeenix servers. The Squeenix? Like, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I just want to blow stuff up. Please. Oh, a funny, a little fun fact. Just Cause, actually, Just Cause got their name from uh, the Just Cause thing uh, from Noriega down. Uh, it was a long standing um, operation by the United States military down in uh, Latin America. And Just Cause, the you know, Operation Just Cause was basically us going down there and trying to put the hurt on the on the drug cartels. Little fun fact for you. Wow. Yeah. Random yeah. knowledge. Which, yeah, which fits very know. well. Yeah. The more you know. <laughs> you yeah, need the rainbow. The more you know. The more you know. I'm over here, GI Joe, and, and knowing yeah. is half the battle. And the other I half like is red lasers and blue lasers. I like I like to mix that with the uh, the coals. <laughs> A slogan is like the more you know the more you coals and knowing is half the battle so i'll do like the more you know the more you coals and knowing is half the battle <laughs> see you say coals and i think lumberjack you know measure twice cut once <laughs> but yeah uh yeah redfall oh, it, so. it sounds to me you know because you mentioned redfall and redfall apparently in in news they're they're trying to back off on the whole always online thing which is a great move and also on top of that, they're saying there's absolutely not going to be any microtransactions in there. They do have two um, DLC characters planned, but they couldn't talk much about that. So, yeah. I think it's May... What's what's coming out in May? Something was coming out in May. I forget. I don't. I, don't, I can't recall if it was Deadfall or, or Redfall or not. But. Uh, is it Tears of the Kingdom? Mm, no, nah, it doesn't ring a bell. But, uh, mm. hmm. Okay, now I need to know when Tears of the Kingdom comes out. I think you're right. I think it's like May or June. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's, you know, like the always on thing. Oh, yeah. Another thing. Uh, State of Decay 2. That's not an always online game. And, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've streamed it a few times. I feel that microtransactions are bad when they don't give you an. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we we'll, we'll we'll get to that Jailer Games. I I promise. I prom. Matter of fact, let's just get to it now. Let's. Uh, somebody else has something to add about um implementation um, and execution, or per management. Nah, much. I think we pretty much beat the shit out of that horse. <laughs> yeah. That is that is a horse that deserves to be beat. Send a message to the powers that be. Triple A game freaking developers. Come on, man. Be a fucking gamer, not a money boy. Actually, huh? I, I think um. Uh, bad execution. The most recent example: Last of Us Part One on PC. Sorry, I've I've been completely Ooh. blind to Last of Us news. I've only completely. heard a small smidgen of that. Oh, so, oh, Last of Us. Real quick, Lex Legger actually streamed that Last of Us, uh, the Ooh, the new nice. one, and he's got an insane rig. He's got a. I'm super freaking peanut butter jealous. Mm. He's got a gaming PC and he's got a stream PC. I've seen his setup in his Discord. He's got literally yeah. six screens in front of him. Jesus. I'm like, oh my gosh. You'd be surprised how common that is for a lot right. of streamers. You shut up. I'm new to this. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you were going to say, Ranger? You'll get there. Don't worry. Yeah, so The Last of Us Part 1 uh, on PC, the port was done by Iron Galaxy. And people have been flaming the ever-living crap out of it because of poor performance. So, uh, let's see here. If I go to The Last of Us Part 1 right now on Steam, it looks like it is mostly negative with 8,600 reviews. And Christ. the majority of the reviews are talking about how the game crashes such a ridiculous amount that they can't even play the game. Is this Part uh, 1? Yes, Part okay. 1. Um, it talks about how it's so poorly optimized that even on the lowest settings, uh, it will just eat up VRAM. And it's just like this comment the last of my GPU. <laughs> oh, mostly <laughs> negative. Jesus. Yeah. And, no. and well, it's well, things yeah. like this PC ports of games uh, that. Uh, and this isn't this isn't just an isolated incident. Um, I think of notable examples from Square Enix with uh, Final Fantasy VII, 
um, oh, the remake, the original, yeah. original and remake had technical issues upon uh, port to PC. Same with Chrono Trigger. The original had problems? Are you kidding me? Yeah, there was there was some wow. there was some like, stuttering issues with the original Final Fantasy VII when it was brought over. Um, yeah, it was it was bad. <laughs> Like, not as bad as Last of Us Part 1, but still definitely notable. Damn, that's crazy. All right. Okay. So, moving on. Uh, well, real quick, not making good on promises. Okay, the, the, the one the one that really, you know, well, the two that sticks out to me, again, is going to be Cyberpunk 2077 and yeah. uh, No Man's Sky. Again, uh, I said this before, I'm going to say it again, they're the, the only two games that I actually gave a shot. Like, um... No Man's Sky, uh, I was like, yeah, mm, no, you know, because I saw the reviews and it was like, you know, mis mixed promises. Of course, Jason Schreier did that whole expose where uh, Hello Games was getting the AAA treatment and they are not a AAA studio. So that was asking a lot of fellers to actually, you know, have a polished thing out. And of course, you know, the guy was, you know, introverted and he couldn't say no and he was not a people person. And that's, that's to be expected, really. But, um, Cyberpunk also made promises, and they, uh, oh, we'll release it when it's res ready. Well, it wasn't ready. But like I said, the reason why I gave him a second chance is because they're a new IP. And that's something that, that uh, the, the gaming industry desperately freaking needs. But um, there's, I'm, I'm sure there's other games out there where you said, you know, you know, you saw some promises and they did not deliver or ever. Yes, no, maybe. Uh I'm trying to remember. We'll, we'll have to <laughs> see. <laughs> I think it goes back to uh, Halo Infinite for me on that one. Ooh, Ooh I the, uh, completely uh, forgot about right. that. That was a good yeah. And the vid doc they had the uh, their their deal. I think it was either mid or late 2021 probably early 2021 honestly and they're like yeah we're proud to go ahead and present this game they we promise there will be absolutely no microtransactions. <laughs> oh, what the hell did we see on launch? Wait a minute, that yeah. I, for, I, I, Diablo Immortal, story. maybe? <laughs> that might be more y'all's. Yeah. I don't, I don't particularly know. <laughs> don't y'all have cell phones? Oh yeah, yeah. It, Halo Infinite was just a complete swing and a miss. I mean, the campaign was fun, but multiplayer, especially the big team, just poor execution. I, Never, the servers were so unstable, it cr you couldn't even load into games, they had to shut them down. And then they tried to revitalize the game a few weeks ago, I think, Season 3 launch or something like that. Um, but I think too many people were just turned off to the game. That The, the only people that are going to play it are like either like the really diehard Halo fans that look past the fact that it's just shit, or... I mean, people who don't really know much and just want something different than Fortnite or Call of Duty. Well, yeah. you know, there's there's also the problem with, like, an oversaturation of, like, Battle Royale games. And, you know, once one became popular, everybody else jumped on the bandwagon and wanted to freaking copy that success. You know... I mean, I honestly, I think a Halo VR would probably be the most popular VR if it was ever made. Yeah, well, that's a coding thing, too, so... But, uh, yeah. Um... So, Jailer Games actually uh, commented on the whole Woke Agendas thing, and I couldn't think of one single example of a game that failed because of Woke Agendas, other than this just popped in my head, I swear to God. Uh, what was it, Battlefield 2042 or some shit like that? Where the, the developer says, well, you don't, if you don't like the game, don't buy it. And it was like the worst sale for that oh, game uh battlefield 5 yeah 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 they, they were specifically talking about the french soldier uh the female french soldier that had a prosthetic arm um oh i, re I remember that distinctly and, because oh, the God, God, was, like, i forget I those really Man, to talk about historical was accuracy. female oh I mean, my God. Yeah. Yeah. okay so jailer games jailer games pops off pops off with last of us part two saints row reboot yeah dude i that's huh, yeah talking about killing them dead the saints row oh, reboot man, yeah. man you, that was 
That was atrocious. Aura bad. Never played this Saints Did Row anybody actually either. finish the game? Because I heard it was like almost un unplayable. Yeah. I never played it. Yeah, Saints Row reboot. You know, uh, I mean, I it was supposed to be the more whimsical version of Grand Theft Auto. You know, making fun of Grand Theft Auto while making a great game. I remember playing the shit out of Saints Row, freaking reelected. I love that game. That was great. And you know, I'm just poking fun of the president and yeah. shit like that. You know, dude, hell yeah. You guys have anything to add to that? I mean, that's just a quick thing. Yeah, but Last of Us Part Two. What was woke about Last of Us Part Two? Um, <clears throat> I think it was like the the inclusion of a, a trans character. I don't know if it was like out of their way in order to include it to be woke and, and all that good stuff or if it was just something they had already had in the in the works um but i just know that was the major major thing of it because they made her uh i think a major playable character oh are you talking about abby i think abby from my recollection she wasn't trans she was just muscular uh, the the main uh -oh. i guess that's what people assumed <laughs> yeah know. that that's the thing that like the the issue surrounding the uh, the Last of Us Part Two was that people thought that she was trans because of how muscular she was, but then people were like, they're in an apocalypse scenario where it's literally life or death. It's going to make sense that not every female character is going to be you know slender. It's just the same reason like Aloy oh. and, and Horizon are like is somewhat toned too. It's like they're hopping around, they're being athletic, they're going to look strong. Um, yeah, they're constantly going. The they're main like, um, actually, the main, <laughs> the main controversy that uh, I I saw a lot of people talking about was the fact that Ellie was a lesbian, and it's like, did y'all not play play the first game in the DLC? That's not an open secret, or not a closed secret. Like, well, she straight up, straight yeah. up was out and gay in the first game. Well, there's also the whole idea of Joel's brutal and undignified death. This is coming off of uh, Wikipedia right now. But, uh, yeah, there, there's... Yeah. And then, of course, Jailer Games pops off with Apex Legends. It's quite woke in certain respects. Uh, Battle Royale. Well, apparently, there's uh, a lot of lore for gay characters and non-binary. Bi non That's what Jailer Games says. So, so? And, yeah. I mean... Overwatch has that too, but uh, like yeah. nobody gives a shit about that. It, that doesn't, yeah, it's not necessarily that, that doesn't ruin the game. That. Like the yeah, the characters or whatever. For I mean, I I don't see anybody complaining about that in the games at all. Yeah, that yeah. Like, never come up. Like yeah. there's a little bit of pushback with Soldier being gay because they're like, oh, it feels like it's ham fisted, especially because it was around the I think the allegation, like the first round of allegations with Bobby Kotick. So it's like I could kind of understand. Well, well, hang on, was, well, Bobby Kotick. Before when the game first came out, I thought it was like back in 2016 when they kind of gave the lore behind Soldier. Well, full disclosure, I think Bobby Kotick needs to freaking just sink in his fucking mega yacht, and uh, you know, you know, the reigns need to, you know, of Diablo or not Diablo, Activision Blizzard just needs to be, you know, either bought out by Microsoft or just dispersed amongst, you know. I mean, hell, EA and Bioware, they, they need to get some shit. <laughs> no, that transaction didn't go through, right? They're not <laughs> buying them anymore, right? No, 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 it is. It, yeah, it, it was, uh, I think uh, the UK um, version of FTC, uh, I forgot what, what the nomenclature is. CMA. Yeah, CMA, uh, they said, hmm, that might happen. So, like, it could go through as early as April and next month. If I remember correctly, see, I saw today that Japan just approved was controversial because people were weren't mature enough to take the plot direction objectively because it was very divisive how they took it also abby wasn't trans but there is a trans side character named lex i think hey witchy so glad you could uh, come in and do a uh, chat chat us up thanks man so fun story that's actually one of my partners <laughs> oh right on <laughs> so, hello love um she's just super stoked right on dude well thanks for the follow i appreciate that um but just so you know this is going to be clipped and uh edited and thrown up on youtube so uh witchy thank you hi mom <laughs> hi mom <laughs> what are you doing here boy oh we're talking about stuff that we shouldn't be talking about Ooh. no but um so that's that on the internet yeah Bobby Kodak is a... Oh, I freaking hate him. Anyway, um, so 
the creme de la creme, the, the, the one that, you know, Jailer Games has been freaking harping on for the past <laughs> 20 minutes, poor guy. Uh, microtransactions. Okay, I'm going to say this right now. Okay, microtransactions that change your skin or, uh, you know, paint jobs, ship kits, I'm thinking CQC, or uh, Elite Dangerous, or emotes and stuff like that, that's all well and good. But if it is a skin that helps you out tactically, no. No, uh, you know, like, you know, oh, you want the black paint job on your gun so you can corner cap? No, son of a bitch. It's going to be lighting up neon. And it's going to come with sound. Don't cheat. Yeah, I agree with that. But, yeah. but, there is such a thing as time savers. Now, um, the Assassin's Creed games has got these microtransactions and they call them time savers. And because they put in time savers, they make a really shitty game that's got like extra bloat in it. Now, I, the mo main focus for most of the games that we've been talking about has all been multiplayer, okay? And yeah, you know, you, you, you sometimes you just want to have your single player experience. You want to go in there and do the thing. And you're playing the game. You're you're immersing yourself into the game story and the lore and all that happy stuff. When all of a sudden, you hit a wall. Figuratively and literally, because sometimes you need to have like a, a double jump ability that you have yet to unlock because it's linked to something else or etc. etc. Or a grapple hook that you can't get until or in the loot tables until you pass a certain thing. Now, I haven't experienced it, but I know that Assassin's Creed Origins has and, and Odyssey has massive game bloat in there where you actually have to do a bunch of side, side stuff in order to progress the story. And if you're just in there for the story and play it right through and that's what you want to do, fine. That should be your prerogative. You purchase, you know, the game for 60 now $70. Play the game. Have the story. Look back on it. Says, yeah, that was a good story. Or that story was shit and flat. Whatever whatever the case may be. But, people, you know, gamers... Or not gamers, but um, uh, game developers who put massive amount of game load in there because of those time saver microtransactions I want to burn them at the stake or at least just you know go up and ding dong punch them in the freaking mommy daddy button and say no more and then walk off that's that's my take on microtransactions um it, you know and of course there's there's a lot of stuff that is really egregious in my 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 point so that's 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 me saying that oh yeah before I'm I turn the turn to later on in the table I'm looking over here at, at the Discord screen as if, you know, all these guys that are in the chat with me are at that table. <laughs> like an idiot. But, um, uh, the shark cards that, uh, get sold for Grand Theft Auto online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Straight up, flat out. I have never once in real life ever paid $6,000 excuse my American, for a fucking mag light. <laughs> Where the shit are you going to get a mag light for six grand? Poland? <laughs> Poland. <laughs> I don't know, man. They've been making all sorts of weird shit. <laughs> So yeah, that's 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 my that's my beef. And the, and the oh well, it's um market inflation. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's poor balancing. You know, every time you know uh, Grand Theft Auto Online comes out with a new thing, they they put out more stuff, and you get a normal base car that was released like yesterday, and it has worse handling, worse abilities, looks even worse than something like the Dominator or the Phoenix. But it costs like nine times more just because it's new. I'm like, no, sorry, I don't. No, I don't cotton to that. So anyway, that's that's me on my rant. Moving it on to uh, who el whoever else wants to take take a crack at this. Well, I mean, nut. you you you, you kind of like say the buying something in a video game should be equitable or equatable to like a real life type of thing, but I don't know if you can 
necessarily make that connection because like video game currency you get so much for just random stuff uh it's like i mean i haven't played gta in forever or gta online but i do remember you could get money like you get stupid money for just dumb shit like having a six thousand dollar mag light or whatever might just be pocket change in that game um so, but i mean if it, if it was like actually like hey you did this you you did uh, like an exact one to one of real life in the game, yeah, it's probably not that. But in, in just in a video game in general, I don't think you can do too much with like how the currency works in that game, just because it's a made up currency. But you can, if you look at like Pokemon, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Pokemon uses a system that's very much similar to the Japanese yen, and when you are purchasing something inside of Pokemon there are very real equivalencies to the real world. Like, a Lemonade in Pokemon, like the original OG Pokemon games, I think it's like... It's 100... Two, I think it's like, 100... Something like that. Yeah, it's like 150, 200 uh, Poke dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Well, if you convert that to yen, and then convert that to dollars, that's like a buck fifty to two dollars US. And that works perfectly fine for the system that you have in Pokemon, because you're getting like you know, 1,200, you know, all the way up to a few thousand uh, as you get further up in the in the totem pole. Uh, right. With something like an online multiplayer game, you have to be able to straddle the line between a balanced economy system so that players aren't struggling to purchase everything as well as players are not given an overabundance of things to purchase. And that's the current thing with, like, Sea of Thieves, for example, right? Mm-hmm. You get all of your gold in game from just the the bounties and voyages and adventures and whatnot you're going and doing and there are players out there with hundreds of millions of gold right. that can't really spend it on anything because there isn't anything to spend it on so sea of thieves has the inverse problem of gta online where there is too much influx of gold and then not enough expensive stuff to spend it on that's kind of changing with season nine with some items now costing like three hundred thousand to over six hundred thousand for one piece or like a pair of pants, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and then of course you have the Dark Adventurer set, which is over 80, 80 million by itself. Whereas okay. with GTA Five Online, you have too much, you have too much product, but not enough money, and that is done purposefully in order for you to buy shark cards. It's so insidious, it is BS. And as much as I do enjoy or did enjoy playing Grand Theft Auto Online. One of the things that tired me out all the time was having to do that grind. But I never got to a point where I wanted to buy a shark card because for me, I don't play that game to be able to have the fancy stuff. I play that game to be able to buy like one specific item and then, you know, do the holiday items. That's that's how I play multiplayer games. But these games that focus on the players that do have that lack of impulse control like a gotcha <laughs> game like Genshin <laughs> impact or mobile games like fortnite Fate Grand order uh yeah fortnite <laughs> right that, yeah. That i mean how many how many control. how many stories have you heard about freaking you know you know you know some parent you know handing the phone off to you know little junior and all of a sudden he, he's got like a six thousand dollar freaking credit card bill That's because tough. yeah yeah it's nuts mm-hmm. And then, well, also, well, also, did something interesting though. Fortnite well, no, hang on. Well, this is not, this is not, this is not, this is not about just Fortnite. This is about gaming in in total. Like, there's there's alternative currency, right? So you you buy X amount of whatever, and it's now it's an alternative currency as well. Um, I believe somebody also uh, uh, touched upon uh, like the loot box mechanic, mechanic, or at least that's what I took took you know took it to be. Um, like it. It's too goddamn complicated, and a lot of a lot of um, AAA developers, or even you know, I mean, shit. Look at a, you know, Diablo Immortal. That was like whales. Holy shit, dude! But oh, you know, I mean, yeah, it's it was like, it was insane. But people are just you know like, all right, well, it's a cash grab. Were you talking loot box? Or so are you talking loot boxes and like specifically, well, or are you well, talking like no in general win items? Well, pay to win items. You know, I mean, is is definitely bad. I mean, if it's a single player experience. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna 
fault somebody trying to freaking make some money for for like a pay to win thing because the only person you're hurting is yourself right and you're you're subtracting you know somebody who who engages in a pay to win mechanic or something like that to make them feel like god in a single player game have at it man i don't care the only person you're hurting is yourself because you're subtracting from the 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 spirit of the game the game is there to tell a story and through trials and tribulations which is a very human thing we define ourselves from from the the problems that we face and overcome it's like you know facing and slaying the dragon type thing right yeah but like if if somebody you know pays to win or just you know have god tier whatever's in the game that they're playing by themselves and not affecting anybody else have at it but like multiplayer games that, that i mean loot boxes is a form of gambling and you know as far as i know last time i checked 22 different countries has banned that loot box things which totally torpedoed ea's freaking business model well here's the see i, I don't think the loot box thing is a gambling mechanic I mean, no personally, no hear, hear me out hear me out. okay because you are getting the loot boxes with the in-game currency or um like in in the original Overwatch, you got a loot box just by leveling up. You got a free loot box or whatever. You can yeah, get okay. loot boxes with the in game currency. And okay, stuff like okay, that. okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. No, that's a psychological manipulation because, ooh, as a loot box, what's new? Bing. Oh, I didn't get something awesome, or I got something really awesome. Either way, that advertises the fact that you can pay real money for more loot boxes, getting the endorphin hit. But you can pay money in any game for cosmetics and shit. But yeah, still but see, you're in the but, game. But no, but you're 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 look, No, hang on, brick. You're looking at you know. It's like uh, I'm looking at that. I want that. I bought that from the whole gambling thing. And don't don't get it twisted. Gambling is highly addictive. And look at the look at the who's who's engaging with the gaming stuff. I mean, you and me we're supposedly adults and can make adult decisions. But right. most of the people who are playing Fortnite or uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, right? Or Battlefield, Battlefront, I always get it twisted. But, um, you know, the loot boxes thing, that is a random thing. And you are like, oh, you see, I mean, the, yeah, Fortnite AAA, doesn't have loot boxes. Yeah, well, okay. You know, well, that's fair. But, but AAA, like... AAA developers employ psychologists to get that addictive um, circuitry that, you know, the, the dopamine hits and all that stuff. To get get you addicted to that well the thing with the loot box though like if if you see a cosmetic in the game uh you can get in the loot box or you can just get by that cosmetic outright the only ones that like you can't usually buy are like the special ones that come around during the holidays and stuff like that which when the holiday comes around they become unlocked or you can roll it in a loot box so it's it's yeah. not like it's never unobtainable like you can get it just in general but the loot box is just another way like normally they're just you can get them for free just by playing the game and you can get free skins they still exist in apex legends i mean yeah but i think it's more like csgo loot boxes where you have like a certain percentage to win a certain skin and people will spend like you know two grand trying to get that one item because it's like a game csgo 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 actually has i've never done it myself either well, CS:GO actually has a completely different secondary economy for that. Okay, yeah. and that's insane. And like people will drop like money that can you know outright up buy a goddamn car just to get specific skins in CS:GO. It's insane. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's why I've seen videos like that even on YouTube where people sp- like drop ten grand in CS:GO cases. Yeah, and it's, it's like you nuts. said, it's like gambling. Yeah, and I think another notable example are, are gotcha games. Uh, have, have any of you played uh, Gen- Genshin Impact? I have, I have a little bit. Not. I, I've heard a lot of people um, lately have been playing it more, and but the like, you know, I mean, credit where credits do. I, I've seen I've seen people play it, and yeah, it looks like an entertaining game. And as long as people are inoculated to, to the fact that it's a gotcha game and, you know, it's got, you know, a lot of microtransactions, they say, nah, screw it, whatever. I don't care about that. I'm not going to engage with it. And they still have fun with the game. Cool. I got nothing against it. Yeah. Um, but the my my point with, uh, I was going to bring it against your impact because it's kind of a big notable example. Um, it employs, employs a lot of the same tactics that uh, games like Fate Grand Order or 
uh, Azure Lane or what is it? Like Seven Deadly Sins mobile game. Any of these like Japanese gacha style games where you get like a premium currency to go roll for your, your characters or your weapon items or whatever. Those ones, much like Overwatch, much like Valorant, much like any of these, uh, I guess now former loot box style uh, type games, will give you that stuff, as Prague said, as an advertisement, as mm-hmm. a little trick to say, hey, you know, here's the drip feed. So we can say, oh, well, you know, you can still get this stuff in game. You can get it for get it for free. You don't have to have to spend the money. But if you want to increase your odds, then you have to spend more of that money. Yeah. It, it is very much like gambling. It's a double or nothing kind of thing. They're like with um Fate Grand Order, they will do this thing called a, a guaranteed five star, where you pay uh for premium currency and you can only use premium currency and you are guaranteed a five star. Uh, in a certain type of pool. You're not guaranteed a specific five-star, but you're guaranteed a five-star in that pool. And it's so shit. (laughs) I mean, there's a lot of mobile games that have that. I mean, Raid has that. I mean, I've I've played so many different just mobile apps that have, hey, here's you spend five bucks and you get a random pack and there's guaranteed to be this in it. Well, that's that's part of their business plan for mobile. Yeah, like... like Fate Grand Order was the best, what was that, the top grossing mobile game in 2021, I think, at like $2 billion for a mobile game. Okay. Well, oh, oh, you know what? One thing, oh, yeah, I completely forgot about this. Uh, I just got a DM. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, what's what's the definition of a microtransaction? <laughs> you think uh, it's like I like well, back in the day I mean, uh, what <laughs> I mean in <laughs> what context well I like the, the very first microtransaction yep. that ever showed up was horse armor in oblivion oh yeah horse armor. oh fuck here uh, we go with the goddamn horse armor oh hey what's going on extreme entropy uh we, we we've been sitting here talking about what kills a game and getting hung on the collar we, we've covered everything from woke agendas and we're covering um microtransactions now and yeah yeah bring you all the way back so, uh, yeah, no, we're getting back on that high horse, man. How dare you sell me horse armor when I still have Swear the to God. season pass. Pun. Yes, I did. <laughs> I say that with love, though. It's like, ah, smoochy boochies, buddy. But, uh, like, all right, so that was the first microtransaction was the horse armor from Bethesda's Oblivion. Okay, don't, I, I love that game. And then, yeah, like an idiot, I bought it, and Bethesda's like, Hmm, we're onto something here, which didn't make a lick of sense to me because I actually had the 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 season pass where whatever that downloads that came out with or or DLCs, I got, and it didn't make sense to me. It's like they're selling me something that I should already have rights to, because I paid you know the thirty or forty dollars for the for the season pass. It probably wasn't that much back then, but whatever. But microtransactions, five dollars. Five dollars here, ten dollars here, two dollars there, no biggie, right? Well, um <laughs> the largest micro transaction I've ever seen was Star Citizen. And I didn't see this personally. Now I backed this game way back in the day for like fifty bucks. But uh they have reportedly um a two hundred and twenty thousand dollar micro transaction. Jesus. And the only way yeah. that you got to see that is if you spent already seven grand. So, you know, yeah. yeah, talk about whale hunting. I mean, you know, I mean, I love the concept. I love the idea. I, I really love it, but I don't see them. You know, I mean, this is my personal opinion, but uh, they're there. I, I don't think we're ever going to see, you know, like my son might be able to see it get released, but uh yeah, I feel like that's going about oh. the same way as us ever seeing I-35 getting fully repaired. Okay, hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there scrolling on the Star Citizen homepage, and it says, out of memory. 
No. <laughs> Are you kidding no. me? Some jokes just write themselves. Oh, oh my, my God. gosh. Okay, well, that's uh, enough of that then. Uh, well, that's all I've got. I don't know if you guys want to add to any of the other stuff, or if we can keep on, you know, beating that dead horse about microtransactions and shit, but... Well, as much as I would love uh, skeleton fragments within my body, um, <laughs> I think I'm going to decline. Because we've, we've already been beaten past the flesh. It's just bone at this point. Oh, yeah. There you have it. All the different ga ways that a game could be killed by whatever. Uh, there was one thing that uh, we didn't include in that list was no respect for the source material. Um, <clears throat> that could have been a video all its own, but uh, I figured we'd uh, have a pretty good round table of nerds and talk about games that can be killed by whatever reason. Mostly, it's the multiplayer stuff. Um, multiplayer competitive. Uh, I know that uh, feelings can get hurt and Jimmy's can get rustled. And almonds can be activated. So, that's all that. Uh, if you want to see more of the content that I've put out, you can definitely check me out on Twitch. The link will be in the description. And uh, you can check out Kush King and uh, Texas Cantu as well. They're both Twitchers as well. Uh, and uh, I'll leave it there. So until next time, um, stay safe and stay out of trouble. Thanks,